If you've been watching this channel, you'll know that I've recently moved from a Windows PC to this MacBook Pro as my main computer, my main laptop, whatever, for even for video editing, for photo editing, for everything. If you're like me and you're moving from Windows to Mac, I wanna just run through some essential tips and shortcuts that might help you kind of make that transition. Because the thing is, when you move from Windows, not only do you have a completely new operating system with Mac OS, you also have a different keyboard as well, remember? So there might be things that you're missing. So let's just cover those tips and uh, get started. First of all, I'm gonna start with a very simple one. If you wanna create a new folder on the desktop or anywhere, in fact, you can just use Command, Shift, and N, and that just creates a new folder there. You can see, and I can just call that uh, Folder 1, and it's as easy as that to create a new folder. On the desktop, you can just right click or Double, you know, uh, two finger click and do new folder. But if you're in Finder, you don't have the same option. So if I'm in here, the folder here, and I do right click, you don't have that, that option available to you. So even if I go down to the bottom here and right click, I don't have the new folder option available. But if I can, ju I can just do Command Shift and N to make a new folder. Number two, Command and drag moves a file rather than copying a file. So if I've, got, if I've got my image here, this four, this image 400 meter meters it's called, if I want to move this rather than copy it, I can hold down command, click on the trackpad and drag it across like this. Now, a lot of the time it will just move it anyway. If it's on the same sort of drive and it's in the same area, or whatever, you know, if you're just going from one folder on a desktop to another, it'll just move it anyway. But if you go into an external drive, let's say I've got my NAS here and I go into a folder on my NAS, this would naturally, if I move this across now, it'll just make a copy of it on there. So if I click and do move to bin. But if I actually want to move it, just hold down command, click and drag, and that moves the file. Number three, if you plug in an external drive, I've got one up here in the top right hand side now, or you have a disk image that you've mounted for uh, putting some software on the Mac, you can eject that simply by doing Command D. It's much more simple, much more straightforward than doing a right click and do eject. If you've got that highlighted, just do Command D, and it ejects that drive. Makes a useful one to have. If you're missing, your delete key. Because Windows has an actual delete key as well as a backspace key. So if I type something here in pages and I can just go back and I can delete that. But if I'm, if I'm here and I want to delete the text that's in front of the cursor, there's no option to do that. Well, that's done with function and backspace. So I can just use that to delete the text that's in front of the cursor. If you want to get a bit more information on your radios and wireless and things like that, well, you can hover over there and you can hold down Option and click, and that'll give you a lot more information on the radios, um, sort of uh, MAC addresses and things like that, or wireless. If you hold down Option and click, then you get a lot more information about all the kind of noise floors and uh, transmission rates and stuff like that you wouldn't otherwise have. Option, the option key also lets you get a lot of extra characters that aren't so easy to uh, come by. So in Windows, if you wanted to start a sentence with a bullet point, I mean, of course, there are options to do bullet lists and things like that. But if you wanted to just start with a bullet point, you'd have to do something like Alt 0169, I think. The option key lets you get to a lot of extra characters straight from the keyboard without having to bring up any kind of character viewer or character map. So just option eight, for example, does a bullet. Um, option G does a copyright. There's, uh, there's loads and the option key is really, really useful for that for getting to those extra characters. Control, command and space, while we're on the subject of characters, brings up your equivalent of the character map. And there are millions of characters in here. To be honest though, there is actually a shorter way of getting to that. If I just close that and I just hit the function key, that also brings it up, so much easier to just do that. And this will get you a ton of extra characters, all sorts of stuff, you know, pictures and all these bullets and stars and arrows and everything that you want, equivalent to, the, the, it's the closest equivalent to the character map in Windows. So just double click on it and that inserts it into the page. 
certainly one of my favorites is the space media preview. So if I just minimize this, if you want to preview anything, in fact, in Mac, the spacebar is really your friend. So I can click on this folder here and I can just hit the spacebar and it will open up the properties of that folder and just tell me how many items and how much space, you know, what last modified. And if I just hit the space again, it closes it. But not only that, if I actually go into here, this has got some media files in here. I can preview media files with the spacebar and close it and I can just hit space to close out of it, uh, close out of it again. I can move down, press space to open another one or hit escape to get out of it. So there's loads of different, you know, options available to you. And this is something that people often miss, I think, because people are used to being able to, to go into a page of um, pictures and just use the left and right arrows to scroll between them. And people open it in Mac and think, well, it's, I've got it opened in preview and I can't use left and right. Well, all you do is you go into you use space and then use the up and down arrows. And that just goes between the media files in that folder. So yeah, it's not quite the same. So it's up and down rather than left and right. But with space, it, it's amazing the stuff. It, it's such a useful feature, a really good feature to just get more information on a folder, a file, or open up uh, the actual media file. To rename, rather than doing any kind of F2 with Mac, you just hit the return key. And that's how you rename a file, a file or a folder. Another thing that is missing from the uh, Mac OS, or sorry, the Apple keyboard is home and end. The equivalent of that is just command left and command right. So command left for home and command right for home. And you can do the same sort of things as you would with selection, using selection. So if you hold down shift to select and you press command and then press left, it'll obviously select all that text in there too. Sometimes I think people make the mistake of thinking that with the touch bar, you have to press more keys. And you can configure the touch bar to sort of include whatever you want most of the time. But uh, in the case of brightness, I think sometimes, and I'm sure most people have worked this out to be fair, but um, I think sometimes people think you have to press volume and then use your volume up and down like that. It's an extra tap. You've got to get into it first. What a pain. But you don't. You just have to press it. You can't see that, can you? You just have to press it and touch it and hold it. And then you can just slide it up and down like that. It's the same with the uh, with the brightness, just tap and hold and move it up and down, move up, move the brightness up and down like that. So there isn't a two tap at all. It's just a tap and hold, and it really doesn't take any longer uh, for those for those main controls anyway. I agree though that you know these these ones you have to you know, tap to get into those, whereas they would be just available in the function keys. Never mind. As far as Finder is concerned, Finder is the equivalent of Explorer in Windows. So when you open Finder, you get your list of files and you get your favorite places and you get your different drives and things like that. To open a new finder window, because a lot of the time you'll have one open like this and you'll want to move a file from one to another, you know, visually drag it from one to another. So to open a new finder window is just command N like that. However, finder also supports tabs as well. So you can just do command T to open a new tab within one finder and then you can just drag a file from one to another tab. And the final tip for you today is Command, Shift, and 5. And I can't demonstrate that because I'm actually recording at the moment. But what that does is it brings up the, uh, the window that allows you to capture a portion of the screen, the whole screen, record the whole screen, or record a portion of the screen. It's the equivalent, I suppose, to Windows, Shift, and S for the Snip tool on Windows 10. And uh, it's very, very useful, really quick way of getting to a, uh, cap uh, a the ability to just capture something on the screen and dump it in an email or something. So there we go. Uh, there's probably about 12 or 13 tips there for anyone who has recently moved from Windows and is missing some of those just familiar things like the home key and the end key and, uh, you know, simple things like that. I hope that was useful. If it is, give me a thumbs up or sub to the, subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.